Hey everybody, I'm Ted Thomas, and this is a Code Fling tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to dive into prefabs. How do you work with prefabs and red towns inside of the editor? How can we place them on our map and also manipulate them? Let's fly a little bit over here to this island and let's put a red town. In this case, I want to put the harbor over here. So on the top right, we're going to go to prefabs and then open up our prefab list. For red towns, we're going to go to assets, then bundled, prefab, auto spawn, and here we will find our monuments. So I want to take the harbor. I can click on it and I can get a preview. There are two different ones. In this case, I want to use harbor number one. So just click it, hold left click, and I can drag it into the location where I want it. So let's put it over here. I can see that it's not the proper way around. So we will have to rotate it 180 degrees. Let's press control E to get the rotate tool. Then if we select the green band, we can rotate it on just the Y axis. You maybe spotted that the rotation number over here changed. We almost rotated it 180 degrees. We can also put in 180 over here, or we can select what axis we want to rotate it on. So we know we rotated it on that Y axis and then use the arrows to rotate it 90 degrees. Whatever you prefer, you can use. With red towns, it's important that you don't rotate it on any other axis like this or like this. So let's undo that. I would also recommend not to resize full red towns. Things are made to work properly at a normal scale. If you resize it bigger or smaller, there's a big chance that certain things will break or completely stop working. So now let's control W to get the move tool. Let's move it up a little bit. I can see that the boats are at a level that I think makes sense. So let's have a look at the boats. Well, this is a little bit high, but that should be fixed when we apply the height mask. So I'm looking at the red boat. I think this is fine. So let's go back over here so we can easily see this. Now I got it kind of in the location that I want. I think the first thing we need to do is we have some prefab modifiers here. Let's click on apply height. This looks good to me. What we can do is undo, move it a little bit lower. Apply height, or if we want to move it a little bit higher. So let's just apply the height for now. Then also let's apply the split, which is the textures. And also apply the topology. So everything is working as we expected. If you don't know what the split or the topology are at the moment, click on apply. For a red town, you'll probably want them. And also, I don't think we need to, but for this case, let's also apply the alpha, which will make sure that if there are any tunnels or places where you have to go through the terrain with the alpha, those places will be made transparent. So you can actually see the tunnel or the stairs going down. Otherwise, you will still be able to go down, but there will be a layer of terrain blocking it. So it looks like you cannot go down. Once again, if you don't understand this, I will go more in depth into the alpha mask when talking about caves. So we added our own red town. Of course, there are way more prefabs than red towns inside of the prefab list. So let's deselect this and let's have a look at what kind of things we can find here. So I'm going to close the monument category and let's have a look instead of the auto spawn content and then at nature, for example, and there are all sorts of things that we can drag inside of our map. So let's put a rock over here, drag it in. And with single prefabs, a lot of times it is perfectly fine to rotate them, resize them, whatever kind of manipulation you want to do. Always make sure that it's not weirdly sticking out of the floor or there are certain sites visible that should not be visible. So for example, if I drag in a cliff, if we rotate this, it looks all fine from here. But then if you look from the back, you will see that it's not meant to be seen from this angle. So you will have to move it down. So there are no weird sites where you cannot see it from. And this way it would work, but make sure that everything that you add, you thoroughly fly around, check if there is no weird angles or things that are not working as you expected because it's very easy to just drag things in, not double check it, and then have a broken map. It's not only full red towns that have some of the prefab modifiers attached to it. If I select this rock formation, for example, you can see that this also has the height, splat, and topology. So I can just throw this in here, apply the height map. It will make sure that the floor gets raised, then apply the splat, which will also apply the rock texture and also apply the topology. So all the rules apply as we expected in game. Not every prefab has these modifiers. 
check if the one that you're working with has those modifiers. It makes it a lot simpler to kind of get it in the rough position and then let the modifiers do the rest of the work for you. So let's select this prefab. Let's press F to focus on it. And let's hold F and rotate the camera a little bit. And let's actually look at what kind of options we have here on the left. So we can select the tool we want. You can also use the hotkeys. It's Control W, E, and R. Or if you prefer clicking, you can also select them over here. I would highly recommend getting used to using the hotkeys. This will make working in the editor a lot quicker and a lot more fun because you can more focus on what you want to do instead of clicking in menus. We have the space over here. This can be a little bit confusing. You can see that this truck is on an angle. You can see that the space is set to global. So it's, it's just taking the global axis and it's not keeping in mind the rotation of the object. So if I wanted to move this bus um, kind of like it's going driving forward, I would have to go red, green, red, green, which is kind of annoying. So that doesn't really work. What I could do is set the space to local. And now you can see that it looks at the object and not this global space. So now if I wanted to move it in that axis, I could just take the blue one and move it front and back. If I control D, duplicate this, move it, move a second one over here and hold control and select the second one. You can see that I now have them both selected and you will see that changing the space will also change the behavior when having multiple things selected and manipulating them. If I rotate this on the local axis, you can see that both of them move individually. If I do the same axis global, you can see that it kind of is as one object. And I will rotate it like this. So messing with the global and local space will sometimes give you a better way of manipulating or handling your prefabs. Let's select one of those again. Let's go to the move tool, control W, and then let's move it. And you will see that if I select a axis, in this case, the Z axis, the blue one, you can see the number changing over here. So we can either move this or set a number minus 680 and manually move it that way if you want to be really precise. So if you grab one of these arrows, it will only move it in that axis. So X, Y, or Z. If you grab the middle block, if you grab the middle one, you will basically have a free move on all axes. So for example, if I grab the red one, you can see that I can only move it on these two axes and not backwards. And if I grab the blue one, you can see that I can only move it on these two axes and not actually left and right. That's how you decide what axis you want to move it on. And you have to decide if it makes more sense for you to move it on one axis, multiple axes, or do a free move, depending on what you're trying to do. Try to get familiar with seeing and understanding when it makes sense to move a certain object in a certain way. The same with the numbers is true for the rotation. So I don't think I have to explain that again. The only thing here is instead of grabbing the square we have, we just click somewhere, not on a band, and then we have a free rotate. And otherwise, if we grab one of the bands, same as with the arrows, you only move it on that axis. Scaling, we can either only do the Y, for example, or do universal. Should be self-explanatory if this first explanation made sense. We can movement snap. So if I then move it, you can see that it doesn't it doesn't move freely, it kind of snaps to whatever number we set here. So let's say you are making a gate or something and you want to space it all out evenly, you could set a snap here. So let's, for example, do that. Let's get a plank. Okay, so, well, okay, well, hold up. <laughs> that, oh, good point. Make sure that if, if you think you got the right orientation, make sure you check it from the other side because sometimes it's not really doing what you think it is. So let's set the movement snap. Let's set this to, let's try one. Let's duplicate it and let's move it over. Then well, I think that will work. Let's change to two. Why didn't it change to two? I don't know. This will work. This is fine. So let's duplicate it again, move it over, duplicate it again, move it over. Then let's duplicate it, rotate it on the X axis. Move it up. Oh, turn off the snap. Let's move it up. Move it over. Duplicate. And this is our very rudimental gate. 
So this is one of the examples when using Snap makes sense. I would highly recommend not making it like this. And even if you are, like change some things up so it's not this universal. But as an example, this is when you sh could use Snap. Same thing with the rotation, not going to demonstrate this. We have an option to snap to the terrain. So if this is moved up, we can do snap to terrain and it will move it to the terrain, but pretty self-explanatory. This isn't always as smooth as you expect, but this is definitely a good starting point if you want something on the floor. We have an option to center the gizmo, which is the thing with the arrows or the rotation. So this way you can see it will always stay in the center of our screen. So it's good to know that it's an option and it's over here. This should be a good starting point of understanding prefabs and how to work and manipulate them. Hopefully this was helpful. As always, thank you for watching and good luck with your custom maps.